Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we commemorate today St. Agnes of Rome. Through her inspiration of her purity, humility, simplicity, and also her steadfastness in the faith that led her to offer her life for Jesus, may we be also inspired to conversion and holiness. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who choose what is weak in the world to confound the strong, mercifully grant that we who celebrate the heavenly birthday of your martyr, Saint Agnes, may follow her constancy in the faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 picked men from all Israel and went in search of David and his men in the direction of the wild goat crags. When he came to the sheepfolds along the way, he found the cave which he entered to relieve himself. David and his men were occupying the inmost recesses of the cave. David's servants said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your grasp. Do with him as you see fit. So David moved up and stealthily cut off an end of Saul's mantle. Afterward, however, David regretted that he had cut off an end of Saul's mantle. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, as to lay a hand on him, for he is the Lord's anointed. With these words, David restrained his men and would not permit them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. David also stepped out of the cave, calling to Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked back, David bowed to the ground in homage and asked Saul, Why do you listen to those who say, David is trying to harm you? You see for yourself today that the Lord just now delivered you into my grasp in the cave. I had some thought of killing you, but I took pity on you instead. I decided I will not raise a hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed and a father to me. Look here at this end of your mantle which I hold. Since I cut off an end of your mantle and did not kill you, see and be convinced that I plan no harm and no rebellion. I have done you no wrong, though you are hunting me down to take my life. The Lord will judge between me and you, and the Lord will exact justice from you in my case. I shall not touch you. The old proverb says, From the wicked comes forth wickedness, so I will take no action against you. Against whom are you on campaign, O king of Israel? Whom are you pursuing, a dead dog or a single flea? The Lord will be the judge. He will judge between me and you. May he see this and take my part and grant me justice beyond your reach. When David finished saying these things to Saul, Saul answered, is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. Saul then said to David, You are in the right rather than I. You have treated me generously while I have done you harm. Great is the generosity you showed me today when the Lord delivered me into your grasp and you did not kill me. For if a man meets his enemy, does he send him away unharmed? May the Lord reward you generously for what you have done this day. And now, I know that you shall surely be king and that sovereignty over Israel shall come into your possession. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge till harm pass by. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. I call to God the Most High, to God my benefactor. May he send from heaven and save me. 
May he make those a reproach who trample upon me. May God send his mercy and his faithfulness. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Be exalted above the heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. For your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those whom he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, that they might be with him, and he might send them forth to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he named Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, whom he named Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Cariot, who betrayed him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, for the past days, we have been hearing the story of the rivalry between King Saul and David. Mayroong inggitan na nangyari kay Haring Saulo at kay David. And today, we learn about how they were able to resolve their rivalry. They were able to resolve this by being able to admit to themselves that they were wrong. And they were able to change their mind. In our first reading today, we see how David at first was thinking of hurting King Saul who was pursuing him. But then he changed his mind and he was able to admit to himself, I was wrong. I should not have thought of hurting the anointed king of Israel. And later on, when Saul saw David sparing his life, Saul also was able to tell David, I was wrong and you were right. I should not have pursued you to kill you and harm you. My dear brothers and sisters, most of the time, healing reconciliation, peace, and justice will be attained if we only know how to be humble enough to say, I was wrong and you were right. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading today teaches us that it is okay 
to change your mind. It is okay to say, I was wrong. You were right. If we can only say this and be humble enough to change, then there could be peace. There could be healing. There could be harmony and reconciliation. My dear brothers and sisters, it is okay to change our mind and admit to ourselves, I was wrong and I need to change. That is discipleship. In our gospel reading today, Jesus chooses 12 disciples or apostles. And Jesus teaches us in his choice that discipleship, following Jesus, is not about being perfect and without sin. Discipleship is being open to be changed by Jesus. We can see in the list of the 12 apostles, Simon Peter, who betrayed Jesus, but later on changed his mind. We saw James and John, the sons of Zebedee, they were the ambitious disciples who wanted to sit on the right and the left of Jesus, but later on offered their life for the Lord. We saw Matthew, the public sinner, the tax collector, who later left his sinful life and followed Jesus. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, it is okay to change your mind. It is okay to say to Jesus, I was wrong and you are right. You know, the only one apostle who did not change his mind? Judas Iscariot, the traitor. He was so proud to admit to himself that he was wrong. He did not change his heart. My dear brothers and sisters, today we ask the intercession of St. Agnes of Rome, a very young girl who offered his life for Jesus. She refused to give up her purity. She refused to give up her faith even at a young age. And therefore, the powerful Roman soldiers killed her for her faith. And later on, many people were converted because of her example and said to themselves, we were wrong. It is not the Roman soldiers who were powerful. It is the faithfulness of Agnes who will inspire us to conversion and holiness. My dear brothers and sisters, discipleship is openness to be changed by our Lord Jesus. In this celebration of the Eucharist, let us not be afraid to tell Jesus, I was wrong and you were right. Huwag sana tayong matakot magbago. Huwag tayong matakot sabihin kay Jesus, Nagkamali ako at ikaw ang tama, Panginoon. Ang pagsunod sa Kanya ay ang pagiging bukas na baguhin tayo ni Jesus. Amen. Please stand. As God's holy people called in different ways to spread the good news of the kingdom, we now present our deeds before our Father who cares for us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that those called in the church to lead the people of God may have the courage to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who seek God may find enlightenment and respond willingly to God's invitation to be with Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That young people may recognize the voice of Christ calling them to a life of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and strength from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead may rest in the peace of Christ's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, when you call us in the events of everyday life, let your Spirit give each of us the strength to say, Lord, here I am, I come to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the offerings we bring in celebration of blessed Agnes win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Agnes, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness, through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Agnes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. roof. But, but only say, say the, the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed Agnes a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maria, in 